Tonight's headlines are brought to you by McDonald's. Good evening, Commonwealth, and thanks for watching the Channel 2 News. I'm Sally Lemis. Let's take a look at tonight's top stories. IPI owes tens of millions of dollars and now has been given six months to pay. Also tonight, Governor Torres speaks on Article 12. And COVID vaccines are coming directly to the people as we strive for herd immunity. In sports, the NMI Junior Tennis Championships can be a ticket off island. Stay with us, these stories and more are next. Meal replacement smoothie is a great way to keep your fitness goals on track during the holiday season and they taste great, fast and easy. The December smoothie of the month is Minty Java Chocolate Chip and it's just $5. Check out the Shake Cafe Gold's Gym, Garapin. And there you have it, McDonald's new crispy chicken sandwich from the makers of the world's most stolen fries. The juicy chicken sandwich from the place that offers extra napkins for a reason. The tender chicken sandwich from the creators of a sandwich phenomenon. So you won't just be biting into a chicken sandwich, you'll be biting into McDonald's new crispy, juicy, tender chicken sandwich. Ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Half a day to the WAMI and good evening, Commonwealth. Today is Friday, April 23, 2021. The five commissioners of the casino board order an indefinite suspension of the gaming license of Imperial Pacific. The Commonwealth Casino Commission Board has established a final order to Imperial Pacific International. The casino annual exclusive license fee of 15.5 million CCC is ordering IPI that those payments must be made immediately. And also the casino regulatory fee fund, the license for the machines, the tables, and the 3.1 million must be paid immediately. CCC Board Chairman Edward Dillon Guerrero states they will be suspending the license indefinitely until IPI complies with those orders. IPI has been accused of a catalog of violations and has failed to comply with the Commission's orders over the past five years. CCC upheld their regulatory responsibility and served five enforcement complaints to IPI. Casino officials received the complaints and requested an evidentiary hearing for each one. And from the hearings, both the Commission and the Casino reached a stipulation. I gave CCC Director and I gave IPI Legal Counsel an opportunity to draft the order based on those five complaints. CCC then went through the process, held deliberations, and finally have decided on the remedies for the penalties. So CCC is penalizing IPI $6.6 .6 million for all the violations noted in the five enforcement actions. This will be in effect after 10 days of submission to the Commonwealth Register, which will be May 10. And they must pay this to immediately and not to exit six months. If they don't do it in six months, I would expect that probably CCC would file another uh, complaint and most likely they will be seeking revocation of the license. Dillon Guerrero stressed it was a long and tedious process, but through the license agreement, IPI is titled to be heard by the commission. And because IPI did not contest the complaints, the sanctions are a lot less. But Chairman Dillon Guerrero still has concerns. The gaming industry provides for specific deliverables, which is to build 2,000 brand new five-star quality hotel rooms and invest a minimum of $2 billion. And then the Lottery Commission executed the license agreement 
And in those agreements, they have specific deliverables too. And they went from initial gaming facility, which is supposed to be like a training facility, and phase one and phase two of the of the operation to complete the 2,000 rooms and the $2 billion investment. We're concerned because this is only the initial gaming that they cannot complete. According to Dilon Guerrero, there doesn't seem to be any conversations on what will happen to Phase 1 and 2 since they never submitted a proposal for the Can Pacific property. Which now leads me to believe that if anyone were to amend the casino license agreement, you would have to consider the Phase 1 and Phase 2, which was worded into the casino license agreement. There are dates there. Uh, <coughs> and I understand that the, the governor has the uh, responsibility to enforce the terms and conditions of the, of the casino license agreement. The CCC uh, has the, the mandates when it involves gaming, but a significant part of that agreement is non-gaming, and that's construction of hotel, construction of water parks, construction and operation of uh, entertainment facilities, convention centers, and so forth. CCC is, is not involved in those. The dialogue on legislative initiative to amend Article 12 has many members in the community filled with heavy emotions, whether they are in support of it or against it. Governor Ralph Torres shares his take on the issue, but not as a person in office, rather as someone from Chamorro descent. I believe that, that it should never be abolished. <clears throat> and that's my take. Okay, um, We've amended the blood quantum. And, uh, and that accommodated anyone with NMD descent who have the opportunity and a right to maintain their land. Torres then used Hong Kong as an example. He went on saying Hong Kong was leased by Great Britain for 90 years before being turned back over to China. And now Hong Kong has a highly developed and free market economy. Even if we were to extend the 55 years to 99 years here, I'm open for that discussion. At the end of the day, as long as it goes back to our NMD, that's the most important part. Torres says that he respects everyone's opinion and does encourage every member in the community to engage in dialogues on Article 12. This is the time for all of us. Every one of us, we have an obligation, a duty to write in, uh, whether you support it or not whether you want Article 12 uh, to be abolished, whether you want to maintain Article 12 or you want to amend Article 12. We need to voice that, that view. So again, I urge that everyone uh, here in the CNMI, regardless of your race, regardless of your age, regardless of your status, uh, make it a point to, to, to write your opinion. Efforts to reach a herd immunity and reopen tourism in the Sinai are expanding as the hospital conducts village outreach for COVID vaccinations and a second vaccination site is underway. The Commonwealth Healthcare Corporation and the Governor's COVID-19 Task Force began their first village outreach vaccination event earlier this week. CHCC administered 68 Moderna vaccines to first-dose recipients who registered on-site at the San Antonio Systems of Care facility last April 17th. The next village outreach will be tomorrow, April 24, at the Catman Community Center near the fire station. It will begin at 8 in the morning until noon. CHCC aims to vaccinate at least 200 individuals using the Moderna vaccine. Interested individuals are highly encouraged to pre-register online. Hospital Chief Esther Munia reminds everyone to bring an ID with you for data collection. A lot of this information that we obtain is really transmitted to CDC, um, you know, to the White House. And so these are um, definitely, you know, we, we report on ethnicity, we report on, on everything about an individual so that, so that we have uh, a data collection and good data collection for to transmit over to uh, the feds. Task Force Chairman Warren Villagomez also states that a second site for vaccination will be opening up soon at the Multipurpose Center in Suzuki. We are going to be doing a dry test run April 28 to make sure that all the details, logistics are in place um, before um, the HHS um, <clears throat> federal team vaccinators arrive. Uh, 
um, our goal is to um, to um, you know get through um, our people as well as making sure that that um, you know we avail uh, the services uh, on the south side of the island. As of now, 43.8% of the CNMI population is fully vaccinated, and our target is to reach 80%. Two local males are arrested for a crime committed after a month's time. Diego Pinola and Glenn Vidal have been identified by police as suspects for burglary and theft incident at a residence in Saduktasi. On March 18th, police received a complaint from an individual who stated that a flat screen TV, Sony digital camera and other belongings were taken from their home. Detectives then canvassed the area and checked in with neighbors. One concerned citizen told police that Pinola and Vidal offered the same items for sale. The items were later recovered and returned. The Honorable Judge Kenneth Govendo signed and issued an arrest warrant for Pinola and Vidal with bail set at $7,500 each. Police were able to apprehend the suspects and serve the arrest warrants. They were cleared and transported to the Department of Corrections where they were booked and detained. Two more arriving passengers test positive for COVID-19 and was put in quarantine. According to CHCC, the individuals were identified through travel screening and was confirmed on the fifth day testing. The people are asymptomatic. CHCC has already initiated contact tracing for their most immediate contacts and passengers on the same flight. That brings the total of number of COVID-19 cases to 164 since March 28th of last year. Coming up, we bring another Friday Uke Jam to start off your weekend. Stay tuned. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough of my lips to be out. Let's activate CMI. One of the best things you can do during the pandemic is to get yourself healthy and strong. Gold's Gym is a great place for a tune-up. Wide open workout spaces with dedicated cardio, free weights and machines, personal training, group exercise, and good nutrition. Short-term daytime promo on sale now, just $159 for three months. Call 233-4000. At one of Saipan's beaches, this mother lays about 100 eggs under the cover of darkness. She hides her nest as best she can and then slowly makes her way back to the ocean. The eggs hatch and the babies head for the sea where they will face a daily dose of danger. Just one in a thousand will make it to adulthood. Those that do will one day lay their own eggs. Sea turtles are protected under CNMI law. If you see one that is stranded or if you see illegal activity, call the hotline at 287-8537. The Tan Su Lin Foundation promotes the culture of giving back. The foundation and its generous partners are committed to supporting programs that include health, education, and sports. Initiatives that promote arts and culture, the environment, and tourism will benefit our community and our residents. Giving back and making a difference will help ensure that the island paradise we call home will be a better place to live. Welcome back to the Channel 2 News. 
The big swell that affected the west shores of Saipan has damaged a number of the buoys that make up the Sea Touch Sark and Ray exhibit that was originally permitted off of Fiesta Beach. Some major damage this week by big ocean swells to Sea Touch. The interactive shark and ray exhibit perched in front of the Fiesta Resort was originally started by Baldiga Enterprises, a Guam-based company that also used to run the Sandcastle Dinner Show here at the Hyatt. The exhibit has never fared well with local weather patterns. The exhibit was originally designed to hold sharks and rays and was first proposed back in 2014. Permitting took months. And then in November of 2014, then Governor Eloy Eno signed a submerged land lease that gave the green light to the project. Shortly after completion, Typhoon Sudalor damaged it, and then in subsequent years and storms, there has been more damage. The normally docile Philippine Sea turns violent, and exhibit managers are always trying to decide whether to leave the exhibit out there during inclement weather or to go through the pains of dismantling it. Baldiga subsequently sold the exhibit to Tan Holdings. This week, the ocean struck again. High surf generated by a typhoon west of here brought big swells. On Wednesday evening, they dislodged portions of the structure. This week, workers are now trying to save some of that structure. Everything is broken. Well, because one of it was blown at uh, half a day. The buoys have broken in places and are now filled with water workers trying to drain that water out and pull the buoys to higher ground. It's already cracked, so we have to just uh, open it and the water can go in, go out. Staff said the animals have been released. In fact, that happened some time ago. They say the eventual plan is to move the structure down to the Kanoa Hotel area. The high surf did more than damage sea touch this week. Much of the shoreline on the west coast has eroded as surf conditions remain high. Tonight in our Friday night musical performance, we feature the Island Family Band. It's tonight's sights and sounds, and I think you are going to enjoy it. Off day, my name is Kion Ichihara, and this is my nephew, Jose Carrion, and this is my grandpa, John Ichihara, and we are the Island Family Band. We are going to be playing a song uh, called Midnight Hour by SDIB. Hope you guys enjoy it. Take it away, Joe. <laughs>
Well, I get you in the mood for the weekend. All right, coming up, KSPN2 Sports Report. It's Friday night, and I trust you know what that means. Entertainment lets you do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. Watch your favorite live and local channels, stream movies and shows on TV, on your phone, and on your tablet, right from your Docomo Pacific Wi Fi. No more wires, no more cable boxes, now with the best price. Do TV your way with Docomo Pacific D TV Plus. We're in a race whether we know it or not. Build our new normal. Enough for Mali to be out. Let's back to the HDMI. Buy one, get one free for the off-road adventure at Mariana's Trekking. Come ride our side-by-sides at our best price ever and experience a great 90-minute trail ride. Rain or shine, hopefully rain. Book now at Mariana's Trekking, Saturdays and Sundays by reservation. Call 323-8735 or book at marianastrekking.com. Get your game and gear at Gold's Gym Saipan. Group exercise is a great way to get fit and then stay fit. For something high tempo, go for a ride with one of our instructors in our new spin room. Let's roll. Pilates improves flexibility, builds strength, and develops control and endurance in the whole human body. It also improves coordination and balance. And the Shake Cafe is a great place to stop by for a meal replacement or supplement. See you at Gold's Gym. Buenos Sports, Buenos sports fans. fans. Tennis sports fans, it's full speed ahead now for NMI Tennis. A couple of weeks ago, tennis was added to the Pacific Mini Games coming here next summer. And last weekend, it was the Junior Tennis Championship beginning. 
2020 was an off year for most sports, including tennis. The North Pacific Junior Tennis Championships were postponed, but this year they're back on track. A big tournament at American Memorial Park will help decide who qualifies. Well, Bob, this is a really important tournament. Not only is this our national championships, but within our ranking system, uh, this tournament is worth one and a half times the what any other tournament is worth. So if you win another tournament, you get a thousand ranking points. But if you win this term, you get 1,500 ranking points. And the reason that we have this ranking system is so that we can choose our junior national team that will go to Guam to play in the regional championships. That's the North Pacific Regional Championships. That's scheduled for July 19th to 23rd. So we're hoping that that's a realistic uh, uh, opportunity to uh, get out of Saipan for our first time and play in an international event. National coach Jeff Race is overseeing this tournament that features 53 boys and girls between the ages of 10 and 18. The tournament will conclude this Sunday at the courts on American Memorial Park. For students growing up on Saipan, there's a plenty of opportunities to reach one's full potential. In the land of opportunity, it's plowing time again. Young Star Shining, brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. Saipan has plenty of sports for students to choose from. Sam Rio is an 11th grader at Mount Carmel High School. He can be seen at every tennis tournament. Sam's like many other students here in this regard. The 18-year-old emphasizes the importance of having a strong interscholastic sports program. Young Star Shining brought to you by the Tan Su Lin Foundation. It's quality over quantity in the top plays of the week. Coming in at number two, it's the U18 team. A direct kick block. King Church rushes in. Goal! Top play number two. And the top play of the week, Andrew Schaefer playing in his first Emily game, gets a goal on assist from Sunjun Tenorio. The spinning header, it's good! Spinning in! Andrew Schaefer, top play of the week. Have you ever made a goal like that before? Do you practice that? No, no, no. That's, that's <laughs> very unusual. It's a once in a decade thing for me. Here's the wind up and the pitch. I don't believe what I just saw! For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. 
Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. Go-karts, off-roading, and the driving range now open at Marianas Trekking. Go-kart track will be open Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays with 50% off when you book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Hours, 4 p.m. to 7 p.m. Use the promo code HAFA50 to get your discount. Off-roading is open too by reservation. Come on a 90-minute trail ride that is perfect for families. Book online at MarianasTrekking.com. Golfers, come practice on the driving range. You can even pay online and we will have the balls waiting for you. Come see us weekends at Marianas Trekking, 323-8735. It was hot today. How hot was it, Bob? 90, below 79. Humidity down to 58% tomorrow. Partly cloudy. Some scattered showers here and there. Southwest winds come in the other direction now. 5 to 15 miles an hour. High again around 90, low 79. Seas 4 to 6 feet. Building through the weekend till Monday. Sunrise at 5.57. Low tide at just before noon. A high tide at 5.22. Sunset at 6.33. And that's it. That's it. That's all we got for this Friday. Have a great weekend. It begins right now. Did you know that? See you back here on Monday.